Welcome back to Med Smarter, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. So let's continue on and say we have a organism that is catalase negative, so it does not break down hydrogen peroxide. That makes it a streptococcus. We can then grow these organisms on a blood auger plate, and this will help us determine if they are alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis, or gamma hemolysis. What we'll see with alpha hemolysis is uh, basically a partial hemolysis is occurring and the blood auger plate will turn green. If the blood auger plate undergoes complete hemolysis, this is beta hemolysis, and you will see clear spaces on the blood auger plate. And then if there are no hemolysis that occurs, then you will see very little to no change in the blood, blood auger plate because it is a gamma hemolysis where there is no hemolysis occurring. So we can now move forward and determine our streptococcus based upon this hemolysis. So if we have partial hemolysis because the blood auger plate has turned green in the presence of that microbacteria, it is going to be one of these bottom two, either strep mutans, strep mitis, or strep pneumoniae. We need to determine which one of these we're dealing with. So in that case, we will check its sensitivity to optogen as well as bile solubility. If it is sensitive to optogen, then it is strep pneumoniae. If it is not sensitive to optogen, then we're talking about strep mutans and strep mitis. If we have clear presentation on the blood auger plate, we have our beta hemolysis, as we've discussed, and we can then run those through a test, checking it for sensitivity to bacitracin, as well as the PYR status. And the PYR status is the pyrolidinol test where we are determining if l pyrolidinol beta naphthalamide is hydrolyzed by certain bacterial aminopeptidase enzymes. So if we have bacitration sensitivity and our PYR status is positive, then we are dealing with strep pyogenes. If it is negative, we're dealing with strep agalactate. And finally, our gamma hemolysis, if it grows under a 6.5% sodium chloride solution, then we're dealing with enterococcus, specifically enterococcus fecium and fecalis, or if it does not grow under that 6.5% sodium chloride and PYR status, then we are dealing with a non-enterococcus such as strep bovis. Come back soon for some more discussions and breaking down each one of these organisms in more detail.